Welcome to the Missisquoi Valley School District FY21 budget information presentation. With me today, we have Laura McAllister, business manager, Chris Shepard, Missisquoi Valley School District board chair, Devin Batchelder, board member and finance committee member, and I am Julie Regenball, superintendent of schools, and we have some information for you about our budget and what's happening in our schools. Okay, uh, our current MVSD uh, school board is myself as the board chair representing Highgate. Don Collins is the vice chair representing Swanton. Uh, Terry O'Shea and Megan Conley are also on the board representing Swanton. Devin Batchelder, Eric Borgard, and Peter Magnet are on the board representing Franklin. And Jen Cervalier and Stephen Scott are on the board representing Highgate. During this presentation, we will talk about who, who we are. Uh, we'll go through some slides highlighting each of our schools within the district. We'll talk about how those schools are staffed, and then we'll get into the details of the 2021 proposed budget, talk about some of the increases, reductions, and adjustments that are included in that budget, and finally work through the estimated uh, tax rate for next year and go through the articles that will appear on the ballot and talk about where and when voting will take place. The schools that are served by Missisquoi Valley School District um, are the Franklin Central School, that's grades pre-K through six, the Highgate Elementary School, grades pre-K through six, the Swanton Elementary School, also grades pre-K through six, and the Missisquoi Valley Union Middle and High School, grades seven through 12. The slide prepared by the principal of the Franklin Central School, Joyce Hakey, to highlight that school. Enrollment on October 1st of 2019 was 132. Uh, professional development for our staff last year included all of our classroom teachers being trained on and implementing number talks. Number talks are classroom conversations around problems specifically designed to be solved mentally. These number talks help students to develop efficient, flexible, and accurate computation strategies, which also aids them in math problem solving. We are very thankful for the community involvement that makes so many things possible, such as the Franklin Fire Department, fire safety presentations, Four Winds, hands-on science, farm to school activities, True Colors art, ski program, speech contest, and the senior dinner. A major highlight from last year was the completion of our playground project. This project could never have happened without all of the help in so many ways from so many people. We want to thank everyone again for the overwhelming support that this project received. We are proud of the team, teamwork that exists with students, parents, staff, school board, and community, as evidenced by the awards and recognitions that Franklin has received based on outstanding student academic achievement and school environment. This slide, which the information was provided by the principal of Highgate Elementary School, which is Patrick Harnett. Uh, as of October 1st, 2019, our enrollment pre-K through six was 294. Academic proficiency, Highgate saw a dramatic improvement on our math aspect scores, which is the state testing, and are hoping to continue that trend this May when we take the annual test again. Our literacy scores remain positive, but experience some stagnation while we focus so intently on improving our math scores. Our professional development this year and going into next year will be geared towards renewing our literacy focus and begin a long overdue identification of our need for more science in our curriculum. Nearly our entire professional staff has been taking a year long course called Mind Play to understand the latest research on how students learn to read. High quality staffing. Each year we realize more benefits from our professional learning communities. Teachers from each grade level meet at least twice a week for math and literacy, bi-weekly for behavioral PLCs, to plan, access, analyze, and reflect upon student learning. Positive climate for learning. We continue to try and build emotionally strong children with our emphasis on PBIS, which is positive behavioral interventions and supports, and restorative practices. We take seriously our challenge of meeting the social and emotional needs of our students while simultaneously protecting the integrity of the learning environment. 
our increasing emphasis on building our students' resilience and perceptions of safety, community, and student voice through PBIS and restorative practices, and a declining emphasis on the use of punishment is our way of seeing education as a marathon, not a sprint. Okay, and the next slide um, is a slide regarding the Swanton Elementary School that was prepared by their building principal, um, Dina Sanamore. Uh, the enrollment as of October 1, 2019, pre-K to 6 in Swanton was 626 students. Um, while other schools across the state of Vermont have declined, Swanton School has remained steady and continues to grow. As of this time, we have um, 98 kindergarten students in five kindergarten classrooms in Swanton. For the 2021 school year, it is our plan to add a grade one classroom in order to support our youngest learners in a classroom setting with fewer students. We will then be providing five kindergarten classrooms and also five grade one classrooms. We continue to work hard to meet the social emotional needs of students in Swanton by contracting with um, Northwest Counseling Support Services for behavioral support through our BCBA, which is um, board certified behavior analysts and our school-based clinicians. For the 2019-2020 school year, we also contracted with NCSS, Northwest Counseling Supports, for a school-based autism consultant in order to help us create programs to support this group of learners. We are also currently involved in a, distinct, a district initiative in the creation of an SEL, um, Social Emotional Learning Curriculum, through the facilitation of collaborative for academic, social, and emotional learning. Our professional learning communities, or PLCs as we call them, continues to be the foundation of our teaching and learning in Swanton School. The Swanton, Swanton community, under the leadership of Debbie Winners and Justina Jeanette, the assistant principal, worked hard to make our dream of a new playground a reality in Swanton. What an outstanding effort, and we are extremely grateful for the donations and the support of the Swanton community and beyond. This slide was prepared by principals Dan Palmer and Jay Hartman about Missisquoi Valley Union Middle and High School. Currently, the enrollments in grades seven through eight are 252 students, and the enrollment in grades nine through 12 are 574 students. MVU offers a wide variety of courses for students in grades seven through 12, including arts, foreign language, business, family consumer sciences, and our unique and popular agricultural program. An increasing number of our students are taking advantage of rigorous academics and opportunities such as early college, dual enrollment, advanced placement courses, and our honors credentials. Work-based learning placements and personalized learning options such as humanities in action are also available for students and very popular. MVU students overall contribute hundreds of hours to various community service projects such as Operation Happiness, Red Cross Blood Drive, the Make-A-Wish Foundation, Dinner and Auction, visitations to various nursing homes and senior centers. The staffing numbers indicated on this slide uh, represent the staffing in all of the schools and uh, central office uh, combined. The top number you see, general administration of 11, full-time equivalents. This category includes things such as the superintendent, the business manager, uh, early childhood director, curriculum director, special ed administrators, um, and others. The next category, building administration, 11 FTEs. This includes the principals and vice principal and assistant principals, uh, but it also includes buildings and grounds directors in each of the buildings along with athletic director at Missisquoi. Uh, next is professional staff, 220.8 FTEs. This includes all professional uh, classroom staff, teaching staff, uh, both licensed and li unlicensed positions. The next category of support staff, 164.6 FTEs. Uh, that support staff includes all of the school-based support, so uh, paraeducators as well as uh, custodial staff, um, food service staff, um, and central office employees. And finally, contracted staff, 15 FTEs. Uh, this is some of the, uh, the NCSS workers that, that Julie mentioned in the previous slide from Swanton and uh, any other outside services that we need to, 
to have from outside uh, agencies. Um, in total, this is a reduction compared to the 2020 budget, and we'll speak in more detail about that further in the presentation. Our pre-K through 12 budget overview as adopted by the school board on January 21st, 2000, uh, 2020. The expense budget is $37,906,229 with an anticipated revenue of $9,161,226. This gives us a per-pupil per spending of $15,626. This per-pupil spending is an estimate only at this time as the state has yet to set the yield. Our expense budget breakdown uh, between general and special education. Our general education, 79% or $29,829,046. And our special education budget is 21% at $8,077,183. And I think it's important uh, for viewers, for us to point out that 21% of the budget uh, reflects uh, special education population in our schools of approximately 20% of our kids are eligible for special ed. Um, as with all service organizations, the largest expense uh, are the salaries and benefits of the employees uh, that, that support the education of our students. Uh, the, the proposed budget for 2021 includes 73% um, um, of the cost going towards the salaries and benefits, um, which does include a, a large increase in the benefit premiums, um, which is negotiated at a, a set at a statewide level, um, which is an increase of 12.9% going into 2021. You'll see some of the other items listed uh, here, which are all other items needed to, to support our students. Okay, so the next slide outlines the proposed budget um, as that varies from the fiscal year 20 or the current year budget. Um, this is broken down uh, by groups of expenditures as outlined by the statewide chart of accounts. Um, I wanted to highlight, it, highlight some of these programs, um, but first I wanted to mention that there may be, um, due to the new statewide chart of accounts as well as the merger in our local schools going into one merged school, um, variations in where expenditures are being charged. And that's really just a shift in most cases um, where um, something such as behavior management, for instance, you will see about a third of the way down um, where some of those costs used to be included under instructional programs or other areas, but now the state is advising us under the new chart of accounts and business rules that it really should be separated into something called this, um, behavior management services. Um, and so we've moved those expenses there. So just keep in mind there are several, several shifts happening. Mm -hmm. Other than that, I just wanted to highlight some of the, the larger areas. Um, at the top, we start with instructional programs. Um, those are costs that are um, directly related to student instruction. That's your gen ed teachers, uh, your gen ed support staff, and, and classroom supplies and materials. Um, under that, we have special education. That's additional supports for special ed students that's required in IEPs. Um, keeping in mind that those special ed costs currently are reimbursed, um, we actually receive revenue back um, at a rate of 56.5% um, and even higher if, if expenses reach a certain threshold. Um, I already uh, spoke about behavior management, but um, that was additional support to students, basically all behavior supports. So that could be positive behavior intervention supports, behavior management um, positions, behavior support positions, as well as uh, contracted behavior supports with NCSS. Um, professional development, um, that's professional development for teachers and support staff. That's a benefit to them as part of two different union agreements. Um, and then it's also professional de development for all staff, including staff in central office. General administration, that includes expenses um, uh, as a result of the superintendent, executive assistant, and the Medicaid clerk, as well as all superintendent's offices expenses, such as legal costs, um, copier costs, supplies, and office rental expense. Uh, other administration, that includes um, 
some administration, the special ed director, the early childhood program director, and the associated support staff they have, as well as any associated supplies for those programs um, as far as their offices are concerned. Uh, fiscal services, that's the, the business office that is part of the superintendent's office. Um, that includes your business manager, finance director, all um, payroll and accounts uh, payable uh, responsibilities as well as grant management and other duties. Plant operation and maintenance, um, that's the everyday care and maintenance and operations of uh, all four of our schools, which includes six buildings. Um, transportation, that line includes all transportation, not only transportation contracts to um, move students to and from school at the beginning and ends of the day, but also um, any out-of-district placements um, that we have for students um, and uh, any homeless transportation or any other transportation arrangements we have, as well as um, any transportation related to uh, field trips um, where appropriate and also athletics at the high school. Mm -hmm. Lastly, um, long-term debt, um, that is the principal and interest payments on um, the last year or two of the Franklin bond, the new Highgate um, capital bond, as well as the MVU bond. So on this next slide, we're just wanting to explain some of the major areas where there have been increases or decreases in this budget. Uh, you've heard us mention before uh, we are looking at health insurance premium increase of almost 13% for all employees of the school district. We knew that was going to be coming, uh, and we also knew that we have negotiations in place this year for all support staff uh, and uh, professional staff that are covered under master agreements, so that we would be looking at um, those, those adjustments for this year. So we were very careful in looking at our enrollments, in our class sizes, and in our um, course offerings. To We looked at vacant positions that we felt that we didn't need to fill. We looked at folks who we knew would not be returning for one reason or another. And we really examined the need in every single building before when building this budget. And I have to say the principals have done a remarkable job, as have our uh, early childhood and special ed directors, so that we could put together a budget that made a lot of sense um, to develop uh, good programming and support our schools uh, at an appropriate level. So we also, in this budget, have facility bond debt payment, principal and interest for the high gate bond. Um, investments in building and grounds, repair and maintenance, and capital improvements. When we were going through the MVU bond as well as the Highgate bond, uh, the community was very clear with us that we needed to take care of our buildings, that we had to maintain them, and that we weren't going to just go out to bond and then defer maintenance. So we've made sure that we had adjustments there to take care of all of our buildings. Um, there's an increase in our student transportation contracts. Um, we did reduce some professional and support staff, as I mentioned before, through attrition, which is uh, when we know there's going to be a vacancy. We examined each of those opportunities. We reduced the high school department budgets. The principals worked very closely with those departments to see what they actually needed uh, and where they could make reductions, where it made sense. Um, and again, as Laura mentioned earlier, You'll also notice in this budget there have been some shifts in movement um, from one fiscal year to another as we have merged and as we are redesigning the state, the chart of accounts required of us by the state of Vermont. I think a good example would be the one that was mentioned on the slide before for Swanton. Uh, 98 kindergartners going into first grade classrooms of 25 first graders are well above the state quality standards. Uh, and so we added a first grade classroom to this budget. We didn't just add, however, we offset that cost with a reduction of a position that we didn't need to fill. So throughout the budget, we've done things like that. The estimated 2021 homestead equalized property tax calculation uh, is shown here. It starts with the proposed expense budget of $37,906,229. Uh, 
that number is offset by the revenues that are included in the budget of $9,161,226, uh, leaving the education spending for, for this proposed budget at $28,745,003. This is the number that's used to calculate the tax rate. This number is divided by the estimated equalized pupil count for the district, which is 1,839.6, leaving us with the estimated education spending per equalized pupil of $15,626. Based on the uh, FY21 um, estimated property uh, yield, of $10,883. This results in a calculated homestead tax rate of $1.44 per, per 100. Um, compared to the FY20 equalized tax rate, this is an increase of one half of one cent. Uh, so a very small increase um, coming from the expenses that our district and our board and our administrators are able to control. Hmm. Laura, is there anything in this calculation that you think is important to highlight as uh, drivers of the tax rate? Well, I think it's important um, to highlight again, or to reiterate what you were saying, is that you know the expense budget I think is is a moderate increase given the situations um, with the increase to health care and the but we've adjusted that appropriately so that increase is as moderate as possible, and then the estimated equalized pupil that your net ed spending is divided by um, remained fairly consistent for MVSD. Um, that is one of the largest uh, elements that goes into your tax rate calculation and can really make a big difference if that number drops significantly. We are fortunate that while enrollment has dropped in some schools and increased as other, in others overall for MVSD, MVSD we have remained fairly consistent in that, and that's that's really important here. Thank you. In our comparison to others, uh, spending per equalized pupil in the FY21 MVSD proposed budget, where equalized uh, spending would be fifteen thousand six hundred twenty-six dollars. In our FY20 MVSD actual budget, it was $15,233. The state averages for FY19 were, for uh, equalized pupil, was $15,521. In FY20, it was $16,235. The FY21 estimated spending uh, per equalized pupil for the state average is $17,133. Our FY21 MVSD proposed spending budget is fifteen or one thousand five hundred and seven dollars less than the estimated FY21 state average. To calculate the final estimated um, adjusted tax rate for each of the towns within our district, uh, we have to incorporate the common level of appraisal or CLA. This number is a calculation performed by the state, uh, which measures um, our, our uh, homestead tax assessments relative to, to those of the other towns throughout the state. Um, in this case, in this year, the CLA in each of our three t towns decreased, uh, and this decrease has the effect of increasing our estimated adjusted tax rate. Um, so you'll see that the, each of the three towns has a different CLA uh, ca as calculated by the state of Vermont, which results in three different tax rates for each of the towns. Um, in Franklin, it's $1.48 per hundred, Highgate $1.40 per hundred, and in Swanton $1.43 per hundred. Um, again, the CLA doesn't have anything to do with the spending in our schools. It's, it's the calculation of relative property values in our towns uh, performed by the state of Vermont. The estimated tax rate impact on homestead value of 200,000 for Franklin an FY20 build tax was 2830. An FY21 estimated tax would be 2961 for a $134 increase for the year. On FY20 build for Highgate it would be 26.92 for FY21 estimated. It would be 27.91 for a $99 increase. Swanton's 
FY20 build tax was twenty seven eighty three. Uh, their estimated FY21 is $28.50 for a $67 increase. These estimates do not reflect any income sensitivity. So, um, again, the decrease in CLAs from 2020 to 2021 in all of our towns uh, will negatively impact that, that tax rate um, by, by increasing the rate that we pay per $100 of assessed value. Uh, this is something that the school district does not control. Um, it's calculated by the state of Vermont and is driven by the property values statewide um, and the property values within our community. It's also important to note that 70 to 80 percent of taxpayers in Franklin County uh, will receive some level of income sensitivity um, on their tax bill, which will reduce the total tax burden for those individuals. So on your ballots this year, when you go to vote, and we'll be voting by Australian ballot again, the first article you'll see will be to elect from the legal voters of said district the following officers, a moderator for a term of one year, a clerk for a term of one year, a treasurer for a term of one year, an MVSD school director for a term of three years from Franklin, an MVSD school director for a term of three years from Highgate, and an MVSD school director for a term of three years from Swanton. The candidates for each of these elections are the moderator, Tim Magnet, is running. For the MVSD clerk, Nola Gilbert is running. For the MVSD treasurer, Georgette Roddy is running. For the school board positions for Franklin, at this time is open for a write-in. Highgate, uh, school board representative for Highgate, Steve Scott is running, and school board representative for Swanton, Terry O'Shea is running. The second article that will appear on the ballots uh, says, shall the voters authorize the board of school directors to make available school facilities and equipment for specified public purposes if those purposes appear to be in the best interest of the residents of the district? due consideration being given to efficient, economical, and appropriate use of the facilities and equipment. Uh, proposed budget, article number three. Shall the voters of the Missisquoi Valley School District appro approve the school directors to expend $37,906,229, which is the amount the school directors have determined to be necessary for the ensuing fiscal year? It is estimated that this proposed budget, if approved, will result in education spending of $15,626 per equalized pupil. This pro projected spending per equalized pupil is 2.6 higher than spending for the current year. Article 4. Shall the voters of the Missisquoi Valley School District authorize the board of directors of the said school district to borrow money to pay the current expenditures in anticipation of taxes and to sign notes for that purpose? Or is there anything voters should know about that article and what it means? It's something we have all the time. Yes, it's an article that we have had historically, um, at least for the last several years. Um, it has to do with the fact that... Um, Taxes, tax revenue is received by the town and then distributed to the school districts um, after the school year starts. And therefore, we need money to operate. And so we need to have a line of credit to do so. I think it's pretty typical for, for school districts across the state. Mm -hmm. um, interest rates are often very low and we only borrow as needed. Thank you. The polling places and times for March 3rd, 2020. Uh, for Franklin, it's at the Franklin Elementary School, which is 15 School Street in Franklin. For Highgate, it's also at the Highgate Elementary School, which is 219 Gore Road, Highgate Center. For Swanton, it's at the Swanton Village Municipal Complex at the corner of 1st and Elm Streets in Swanton. All polls open at 7 a.m. and close at 7 p.m. There will be an informa a public informational meeting regarding this budget held at MVU Library at 7 p.m. on February 25th. Uh, all are welcome to come and ask questions if, uh, and collect answers as needed. So people can also get absentee ballots um, as of this week, February 12th, uh, at their town clerks. 
Um, we will be sending out postcards to the voters in the community to let them know where they can find our annual um, report. report. Thank you. Uh, we will have those available on our school district website, which is mvsdschools.org, as well as at the town clerk's offices, the superintendent's offices. It'll be available on school websites and at the schools in printed form as well. Um, I, I want to thank the administrators and the board for their hard work in preparing this budget. I think it's a very responsible one and it's been very thoughtful. We've been very serious about preparing a merged district budget. Uh, and I want to thank the community for their continued support of our schools and the programming and the work that happens in all our communities. Thank you.